The Mugan 5 Black Edition Revision C from Scythe. It's big, it's black, and it's a cooler. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Before I get into the overview, to have full disclosure, Scythe did send me over this cooler to test and review, but as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine. Now on to the overview. There are many different versions of the Mugan 5. There is the Mugan 5 Revision C and the Mugan 5 Black Edition Revision C. These sell on Amazon.com for 56 and 66 US dollars respectively. There is also the Mugan 5S and the Mugan 5 Revision B that are very similar to the Revision C, but don't come with the most current socket hardware. Now what I have and have tested is the Mugan 5 Black Edition Revision C. So let's go over what you get in the box. There is the heat sink and fan. There is a instruction guide. It comes with two sets of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, the mounting hardware, plus Scythe does provide a long PH2 screwdriver. Taking a closer look at the heatsink, there are six 6mm continuous heat pipes. The coal plate is copper with what I believe is a nickel plating. The fan that comes with the cooler is a Scythe K's Flex 2 120mm fan. It has a 4-pin PWM connector. It has 11 blades. It has rubber pads on all eight corners, and it has a max rated RPM of 1500. The dimensions of this cooler with the fan attached is 154 millimeters high by 136 millimeters wide by 110 millimeters deep. Now, based off these dimensions and the way that the heat pipes are bent or angled, I should say, you shouldn't have any RAM clearance issues. Now you might have some GPU clearance issues if the GPU is in that first slot. At the very least, you will have issues taking the fan off the cooler if you have that GPU in the first slot. For socket compatibility, the Mugan 5 Revision C and the Mugan 5 Black Edition Revision C is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets, as well as Intel's HPC lineup. For AMD compatibility, it's compatible with AM4 and AM5. And that is it for the overview. Now, before I get on to how to install the CPU cooler, if you are liking this video and would like to support the channel, you can use my Amazon Associates links down in the description. All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and then add an item or items to your cart and order them, and the channel will get a small kickback at no extra cost to you. Okay, I will be installing this CPU cooler onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets are different, so if you are planning on installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You can use the screwdriver Scythe provides, or you can use your own long PH2 screwdriver. You will also likely need some isopropyl alcohol. Plus, if you're installing this cooler onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. You start off by aligning the holes of the motherboard to the backplate. Then, with the motherboard flat, place the plastic spacers over each hole. Then, find the AMD mounting bars and the AMD mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes in the mounting bars. Then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers. Screw the mounting screws into the holes on the back plate. Making sure that the mounting bars are facing out with the little grooves on the top. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now make sure to remove the fan from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the screws on the fastening bar. 
then screw in the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once that's done, you can install the fan onto the heatsink, then plug in the PWM connector into the CPU header on your motherboard. And that's the installation. Next, I'll go over the fan's PWM range. So with the fan attached to the heatsink and at 100% PWM, this motherboard is showing the RPM of this fan at 1570-ish, with the DBA being 36.4. As always, that is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM of this fan at 380-ish. And this has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. So all in all, this fan does have a pretty good RPM range. Now, before I get to the results of my testing, if you are appreciating all the testing I've done here, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. 100% of what I receive goes towards buying things to review. A link is in the description. As always, I strongly recommend you watch my CPU cooler testing methodology video. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. There'll be a card above and I'll also have it down in the description. So starting off with the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test, the revision C had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 73.1 C, which has it pretty much tying the AK120, the BA120, and the eSports Duo. Then at full speed, the average CPU steady state temperature didn't actually change. However, it is still pretty much matching the same group of coolers. Now for the 150 watt testing. In the noise equalized test, the CPU had an average steady state temperature of 82.1 C, which was a bit higher than I was expecting it to be. Then letting the fan run at full speed had the average CPU steady state temperature drop to 81.1 C. So only a one Celsius drop between the 35 dBA and full speed tests. So really not much of a difference there. So what do I think of the Mugan 5 Black Edition Revision C? All in all, it is an okay cooler. I'm not entirely sure why it didn't perform all that well, or at least as well as I was expecting it to. I do have some theories why, but I'm not able to test all of my theories, which I do see as a problem. My first thought is it might be the fan, so I switched out the fan for a C12C, which I got with the Burst Assassin 120, but I got the exact same temperature. Then I tried matching the C12C with the stock fan, and that only dropped the steady state CPU temperature by 1.5C, so I don't think the fan is the direct issue here. I'm thinking it might have something to do with the way that the heat pipes are bent to increase RAM clearance, and or it might have something to do with the fin density of the fins on the cooler. The Revision C having only 38 fins, while something like the Burst Assassin having 48 fins. Although those fins, I understand, are smaller, but they're certainly less dense. Now, I would need a good IR camera to see if this is truly an issue, but I don't have one, so yeah. It could also have something to do with the mounting pressure of the cold plate onto the IHS, which yes, I know Gamers Nexus does the mounting pressure testing, which I have actually looked into, and I know Steve's not lying when he says that it costs a lot because the quote I got was for around 20,000 USD. So yeah, there's really no chance in hell I'll be doing that anytime soon. But getting back onto topic, the warmer than expected temperatures are likely some sort of combination of these assumptions. So what I'm trying to say is based off my testing, the Mugan 5 isn't a bad cooler, and in my opinion actually looks really, really nice. It's just based off its size and build quality, I really feel, or at least think, that it should have performed better than it did. Which leaves me thinking maybe I need to improve or at least have more testing to look at these kinds of things. But either way, that is all that I have for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you can view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. 
Uh, you may want to check out this here. It will likely be my CPU cooler playlist. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.